Welcome back to the channel guys. This is Drew with American Made and today we are finally filling holes in the knotty alder uh, for the epoxy tables. I got one slab that's glued up. Right now I am spraying it with clear shellac and that way the black epoxy will not uh, stain the grain. It dries extremely fast. I've been uh, kind of researching different methods, Blacktail Studios, and he uses shellac. Wasn't able to get it all the way there. Need like a drywall handle. <sighs> well, my joints held though, I dropped it. And it all held together, hopefully. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! Okay, so I got my table loaded up, and now I'm gonna head to CNC, get it milled, and then hopefully by the end of tonight, I'll get a coat of Rubio on it and see what we're working with. When you start sanding epoxy, you are going to expose little micro bubbles. As I step up and progress through my grits, right now I'm at 80 grit, I am going to take a pencil and mark up my slab. And this allows you, as you sand, to see where you've sanded, if there are any high spots. And you can do this as many times as you need to get flat. Now each time, as I step up a grit, I'm gonna remark it, and I'm going to sand a different direction. Uh, these techniques I picked up from Blacktail Studio, and 
John Katz Moses. Very great channels. If you're not following them, highly recommend. I've learned a lot from those guys. So as I step up and go through my grits, I'm going to go 80, 120, 180, and then 220. Uh, I believe Rubio recommends not going above 220 or it might be 180. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to recheck. These are getting Rubio finish. But as I sand and go through my progressions, when you hit epoxy, you are going to expose micro bubbles. I will be using uh, Starbond. It's black CA glue. Um, and so far, it's worked pretty good. I think you need to make sure and mix it up when you get them. They come with a nice little kit of uh, little micro tips, which are perfect for uh, filling pinholes. So you can touch up any little hole in it. I've noticed it's almost you spread a layer and kind of work it in and then hit it with your activator. It's pretty cold in the shop, and it, but it still seems to be working well. If you have a large void, yesterday it took a while, but I was actually able to fill it. I just had to do multiple thin layers and give it ample time, but it did get hard and it probably filled a almost quarter inch deep hole. So, so far I've been really impressed with that, uh, the Star Bond. This is the first time I've used that brand of CA glue. Um, marking up your slab really helps because epoxy sands a lot harder than wood. So if you run your hand across your slab, if you're not careful, uh, you'll really have a tendency to burn your wood down and the epoxy stays high. So uh, just be sure to use good sanding etiquette and be careful, um, especially if you are a novice like myself. Well, I got the top sanded down to 150 grit. You see me use the pencil, being very careful to get a nice even sand. I just wiped them down with 91% isopropyl alcohol. This is the bottom side. I will finish this first. You know, once I wipe it off, on Rubio's instructions, it says when you're done, make sure and wipe it off so it's dry to the touch. So here's the Rubio uh, part A, component A, three to one on the accelerator. I am gonna apply that to the bottom first, let that set up, wipe it down. You wanna make sure and not leave anything standing on your surface for greater than 30 minutes. Uh, most guys I see wipe it right on, wipe it right off. First time using Rubio, so we'll see how it goes. Then I'm gonna flip it over and finish the top. When you're doing tables like this, you wanna be always be sure to apply equal finish top and bottom. If you don't, you can get a bow. Now I intend to put a channel, a C channel in these to stabilize them, but uh, this is just to get some pictures for customers. So I'm gonna be sure to finish top and bottom. If the finish gets a little damaged on the bottom side, it's not a huge deal. I just want to be sure to eliminate any cupping. So that's something you want to be aware of. First thoughts on Rubio are, I love it. The biggest surprise, which I'd read it was very easy to apply, which it was, you essentially put it on with a card, spread it out, uh, rub it in, and then pull it all off. But the biggest surprise to me is the silky, smooth feel. Gosh, I don't know how to explain it. This is only sanded to 150, but just touching it, rather than like a polyurethane or film forming finish, kind of has that plasticky, I don't know how to explain it, dull. But when you touch this table, it is just silky smooth. You can still feel the imperfections in the grain. I am a huge fan so far. We'll see how durable it is. Very surprised. Where I think that's useful is obviously furniture, where you want something to look, feel, that tactile sensation of something hand-built, handmade. Uh, if you're looking for that, Rubio is gonna give it to you. I don't, I've never felt the finish quite like that. Uh, so yeah, I think if it is durable, to me, uh, sitting down every night at a table like that would just be awesome.
the feel is what you would hope a high-end piece of furniture or wood table, the feel you would hope for is what it feels like. Just can't really put it into words, but I'm highly impressed. <laughs>